Previously on The Apprentice, your next task is challenging. Each team is going to set up a flower business. Matchstick decided to zero in on tulips and Holland. I called a costume shop and I thought two girls could be in Dutch girl costumes. Why can't kids be involved? People can't resist kids. I'm starting to feel a little overwhelmed by the whole process. I'm handing my management over to someone else, and I'm leaving the law. No, you're not. We were so disorganized. We were like an octopus with arms going in all different directions. You know what we need? We need Brasso. Waste of money. Not a yeah. use of resources right now. What? Get out of here. Just leave. Just leave. For whatever reason, Dawn felt the need to tell him to back off. That sealed her fate with Jim. I really honestly think that we just need one famous floral designer and highlight his name. Okay. I called this guy named Renee Hofstedt. I knew I had to hook this fish. Hi, guys. Celebrity floral event today. She would like to purchase this. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Tulips. We're selling tulips. Tulips. It's New York <laughs> over here. I think Martha's going to think that our whole project is a disaster. Chuck, what do you think went wrong? It just was. Well, I think you didn't invest creativity in this venture. The hiring of the Dutch girls, I thought, was real tacky. Jim, who, who is responsible for this failure? Charles, I have to tell you, it's Dawn. I feel the need to take complete responsibility for this failure. I mean, it really, really bothered me that you talked about quitting. I don't think I've ever quit a job. I mean, I've gone through going to jail. I don't think that I can keep you here if you can't be a leader here. Chuck, I wish you good luck and goodbye. Fourteen candidates remain. Who will ultimately be The Apprentice? that both Jim and Don will come back unless something drastic happens. Yeah. Everybody needs to pull together because at this point it's it's, it's, it's embarrassing. an embarrassment. After two consecutive losses, the team was in disarray, not getting along, fighting, and Don has been the center of conflict. It, it would be different if we really functioned as a team from start to finish. It's disgusting, I'm, embarrassing, I'm, I'm and sh it I'm sh I said it was shameful. If I want my team to succeed, we need Don to go home. Good evening, everybody. Hello, hello. I do want to throw up. I think every single person on the team has it out for me. But in the real world, you have to work with people that you don't like, people that you don't get along with. You just have to find a way. <laughs> For the next task, I'm going to basically shut up and speak when spoken to. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm OK. How are you? I had a, a false alarm. I thought I was feeling contraction. It ended up being nothing. I don't do know. you need for anything? I mean, is there anything I can do for you? I want what's best for you. My wife is pregnant. She's ready to give birth. It's sad that I can't be with her. But you know, I, my wife wants this for me more than anything. It's about making our lives better in the future and for the future. I can't wait for her to give birth. I'm just waiting every day for the phone call. I love you, Angel. Good luck with your task. Bye-bye. How 
is everybody today? Sleeping mostly. They are? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been up for hours and I'm feeding my horses right now and then I'm gonna put them out in the paddock. So today I'm gonna be at a Martha Stewart photo shoot and I'd like all of you to meet me there on the ninth floor. Creative offices, okay? Okay, great. Don't be late. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. That's beautiful. Yeah. If they have any resources at all, they're going to look at all these beautiful things. Well, hopefully they'll be involved in the right research. Well, I hope so. I think uh, this next task, even though it seems so simple, is really going to knock them dead. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to week three of your 13-week job interview. Uh, what we're in the midst of here is a wedding shoot for our weddings magazine. Martha Stewart Living Weddings was our second publication after Martha Stewart Living, and it has really become the weddings magazine. This weddings industry, by the way, is over $72 billion a year. So for your next task, each team has to design and bake an original wedding cake. Now each team is going to have its own baker and its own kitchen at the Culinary Arts Institute. You're gonna work with that baker, bake the cake, decorate the cake, transport the cake, and sell the cake at a bridal fair at Michael C. Fina. Michael C. Fina is one of the leading wedding registries and retail stores selling all kinds of things for the bride. And the cake has to not only look good, it has to taste good. So the team that makes the most money from the sale of its wedding cakes wins. And as usual, Charles and Alexis will be reporting back to me, hopefully with lots of pictures. I want to see those cakes. And Alexis, bring me a piece of each. The losing team is going to meet me in the conference room, and unfortunately, somebody's going to go home. And I hope it is not matchstick again. Our guarantee it will not be. Get to work, bake some great cakes. But don't forget, you have to sell those cakes. After all, this is a business. I'm just gonna kind of lay back and oversee everything. After we received our task from Martha, Primaries came right over to the Culinary Institute to start our strategizing. On the project manager, you know, my ass is on the line for this task, so I'm ready to bring it home. We need a cake that the majority of people right. oh, yeah. yeah. flour. Yeah. Right. All we have to worry about is the most revenue, so I think we should try to sell the most. Sell low. Sell low. Yeah. What are the most popular flavors, and can we do multiple flavors for each tier? Our goal is to maximize revenue. So if we looked on the internet and did a little bit of research. We went to, obviously, Martha Stewart website to see what was the most popular cake selling right now and emulate some of those elements in designing our cake. How about almond with Swiss meringue buttercream? Yeah. That sounds That's great. Yeah, that, that sounds, sounds great. great. There's so many different designs when you start to research. I mean, ay, ay, ay. But I knew we have to market the cakes. You're going to have to appeal to a broad range of different brides and not limit ourselves to one customer. Different shapes and sure. tiers, such as round on the bottom, octagon, octagon square, and square on, on the top. top. Something right. different like that. Right. Walk into three or four bridal stores. You'll get a wealth of information out of that. You want to talk to bridal stores? Click on New York Wedding Center on Grand Street. It's right here. It's a wedding center. Howie gave Ryan, Sarah, and myself a tip to go to the New York Wedding Center, which was supposed to give us ideas to create this amazing cake display. Here we go. Okay, there it is. Oh, my God. Sarah. Hi, how are you? Nice Hi, how to are meet you? you? I don't know. This is a very limited theme. <laughs> Probably not our audience. Yes. We're in the middle of Chinatown, and I'm thinking, this is just not the look we're going for. We've got to go to another place that has more mass appeal. Yeah, this is not going to work, guys. It was miscommunication with Howie, and it's really frustrating. If we don't get it together, we won't win this task. I think if you limit your audience and limit your customer base, you can run into a lot of trouble. We're lucky here at MSLO. We have a very big audience because of the way we've structured our business. There's no faking it. It's not that kind of show because we really care about what we do. We're 
going to send one group to the baker and one group here can do market research. Yeah. Our task is to design and create a wedding cake to be sold at Michael C. Fina's Wedding Expo. The team that generates the most revenue wins. Do you want to stay here and be part of the research, no, or do you no, want to go with? We need to go to the She and I can go I together, to okay? Um, because we have two cooks. I think okay, that's well, I need an I assistant like, like her or someone idea. with me. Both Bethany and Marcella are cooks. As project manager, I split the team members up so that we would get the best use of the resources of the team. Bethany, Marcella, and Don were in charge of the design of the cake. Jim, Sean, and myself were in charge of marketing and research. Hi, yes, looking for Sylvia. I've told you the best of the best of the best, but I know you've heard that a million times, and I just wondered if I could no, ask... No, it's never enough to tell me. I've heard of a woman named Sylvia Weinstock. She does the highest end, most specialty cakes you can get, and they go for tens of thousands of dollars. And I thought it would only make sense that brides-to-be that are going to come into a Michael C. Fina store are going to be looking for a high-end cake. I know for a while there was a really hot trend in having individual cupcakes that sat on tiers. We don't do cupcakes. Because if I'm feeling the paper or a cupcake, I don't think it's elegant for a wedding. Okay, excellent, excellent information. I've never been married. I don't know a lot about wedding cakes. I eat cakes for the taste with a big glass of skim milk. Sean being a female component of the research team, I relied on her to learn more about the wedding cake industry. Sylvia, I need to find a man, but when I do, you're baking my cake. I can't provide the man. I can only provide the cake. <laughs> well, you're not much help at all. <laughs> Hello? Bethany, it's Sean. I actually just spent the past 10 minutes speaking with celebrity cake maker Sylvia Weinstock. She says right now, do not go for cupcakes on tears. But she also said it is very popular to do cakes that have pink icing on the outside. Okay. Sean called us on the cell phone and said, okay, I talked to Sylvia Weinstock and this is what she said. And she said the hot colors are this and the trends are this. Okay. I hope that John's research is putting us on the right track. Maybe we need to do a round or an oval cake. Oval diamonds are in now and they never were before. I like it round and classic. We're doing oval, that we decided. Yes, about. it's oval. That's what we're doing. We're going for something really different here. It's a high-end customer that just wants to do something different. The cake is going to be an oval shape, four layers, with a pink ribbon around each layer. You laid it out this way. Did you like the way it's staggered, set back like this? Yeah, let's, let's go with that. We are limiting our market. We're going narrower and narrower in focus by making a high-end cake. If I say something, I'm going to get steamrolled. What the hell can I even do? Whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do. We're going to kick some Heine in this task. By the time we got down to the Art Institute, I was confident that we had pulled together as a team, gotten on the right track, and we were going to win this thing. Boys for guys? greatness, Charles. You've no doubt heard of Sylvia Weinstock. She gave us a bunch of tips on what our cake should look like and what the most popular fillings are. Terrific. It's great, so we're, we're on the road to greatness. If we don't win this one, you have my word, you can fire me personally. I don't think Sean was being overconfident as much as being foolish. To have the bravado of saying, if we don't win this task, send me home, uh, you know, sometimes you actually get what you wish for. <laughs> Just keep going, keep going, keep Damn going. Good, we decided we need to be somewhat traditional. It's going to be five-tier wedding cake. And also, we were making five different tasting cakes, so our customers will be able to taste each flavor. We have to move. You have no concept how much work is still left. All right, all right. Hey, we're back. Jennifer, Ryan, and I had spent the whole day picking out the supplies we needed to present our cake. What time are you open to tonight? And do you guys sell cake stands? What size do we need? I mean, how do we not have a cake stand? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Guys, I'm, 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 you guys were handling setting up the presentation. The kickstand is part of the presentation. I totally disagree with you. I don't disagree at all. I don't appreciate you telling me that that was our fault. That is bull. I read you the list. We gave you all the stuff, and I'm just saying. I'm not. You the sent us to an Asian wedding center. No, whoa, 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 whoa! I didn't send you anywhere. I left, and I came back, and you said we're going to Grand Place. I didn't give you that name. Hey, That's hey, a hey, bull. Hey. I did not give you that stop, name. Stop, you stop. are a liar stop. for telling me I gave you that name. Stop, both of you. We have okay. the best You are a liar. All of a sudden, Howie went ballistic. I've never seen him like that before. I'm just nervous about Howie as a leader now. I just am not sure if Howie can handle it. Liar. You did not lie. Stop, both yeah. of you. Freak out like you know that. What? You know what? Liar. <laughs> I 
just want you to know, we have not been sitting I, on our ass. I know. I don't think you do. I'm sorry I yelled at you. I'm sorry. It was a miscommunication. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. Jeez, you can sorry. get vicious. I'm sorry. Your eyes are like death. There's an element of rush. There's an element of stress in the kitchen. And I think the team as a whole is feeling the pressure. I can see it in everyone's faces. Whoa. Hello. How's it going? It's a pen. Hey, don't. When I was a kid, I thought, ooh, I'll just decorate my mother's like birthday cake and fun yeah. And all I got was screamed at for getting the kitchen all sticky. <laughs> <laughs> was it hard growing up with you know, Martha Stewart being your mom? There's so much I pressure. Don't know. I used to clean her closet out, so, you know, <laughs> see who's neater and more of a perfectionist. I definitely think that our team is just tired, but it definitely helped the mood when Alexis came into the room and really kind of renewed our spirit, reminded us why we were here. We got to ask her a few questions about, you know, being Martha Stewart's daughter, and that was kind of fun. Is it me or am I getting better looking as the day goes on? Hello? Hello? Michelle? Is everything okay? Yeah. You had the baby? Yeah, she's born. Oh my God! That is so incredible. Thank you. I called up and sure enough, my wife had had the baby. I've got a new baby daughter, you know? It's so cool. Yeah! I mean, I feel a little bit sad that I can't be with you. I guess I got a little bit of like kind of a pang of missing them at home, but I, I'm, I'm so focused on this task and I'm doing it for them. You feel better, okay? You just relax. Oh, thank you. I love you. I'll call you tomorrow. First thing. I love you too. Bye. As a good project manager, I stayed with Marcella and helped her into the night. I sent the rest of the team home who would be selling the cake. Holy mother of God, what if they hate it? We're gonna be there in a second and we're excited to see it. It's we're all good. We're almost there. Save it before we get there. All right, thanks, guys. Get out of town! What the heck is going on? It's beyond. Oh my God. Oh my God. What? Wow. Gorgeous. That, oh. I love it. Wow. I'm not going to lie. As I mean, much I think as it's I a man, little. tried to manipulate yeah, but it. But it is what was, it is. Right. Um, but I you know what? Everybody that came in was like floored. Really? Yeah. yeah, well, honestly, why did they come out so cheesy? I don't like this cake. It's got a hot pink bow. It's oval. If our cake wasn't necessarily my style. Yeah, that's not probably a cake. That's definitely not a cake if I were a bride-to-be that I would have selected. It is what it is. I mean, even the custard is, the key lime is huge, but just pick like, your fun. favorite and sell it. I have no problem with, with, with staying up all night and, and working 100%. What is a problem is having somebody come in the next morning and say, I don't like this. Sean was disrespectful. We gotta go, we gotta go, go, go. We gotta go, go, go. And lift. You're gonna go backwards then for a little bit. <gasps> careful, careful. You're bringing it too low. Damn. You want me to go backwards? Yeah, but just watch my where I'm walking, okay? That's all I need you to do. You're good. Don't go too far. God back. forbid, You're please. Good. God forbid, please, I don't Lord. Want the bars. God, please, Lord. <sighs> one that one's moving. Just watch my feet. What are you doing? Pick it up higher. You're going too low. Yeah, you're, like low you're the one lower than me, so you might. Oh, no, I don't think so. Maybe it's just imagination for both of us. Just walk with it. The whole way I'm thinking, this better not fall. This better not fall. Because we've worked so hard to get here. Each step is another boom, boom, boom on my heart. On the board, or on the floor, on the floor. On the floor or on the board? It's hold on. on well, it's three on, on. You gotta climb first. So hold right. it up, get up. Yeah. No, 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 no. I got, no. I'm not dropping it, just hold it up. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Wait, 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 wait. Just resting for a second. I got it, I got it. Resting for a second. All right. Leaned 
on the cake, thought it was a seat, and put her hand right in it. It's okay. It's okay. That's fine. It's fine. I'm going to cut it. There's three of them. All right. We'll live Don't with worry. that. That's, That's okay. One little accident isn't going to hurt anything. Here we it's go. It's fine. Okay. The cake is it's fine. fine. That's what matters. It's just the sheet cake. It's just the sheet cake. Oh. Bingo. Oh. Okay. Howie, just drive as slow as you can. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I just want to slam on the brakes and the cake will fly through. I, what am I, a schmuck on wheels? Hour, Don't worry about it, guy. <laughs> We're going 15 miles an hour. You have to drive really slow. A lot of potholes, a lot of people. Everybody's cutting me off. You know, I'm like Mr. Magoo uh, driving the car over there. Everybody's yelling at me in the back. Slow down, speed up. Good. Still too fast. Easy, there's a bump here. <gasps> oh, um, oh. Something just moved. Oh. No, something in, the... in my butt in the box moved. No, it didn't. No, it's fine. Are you sure? I'm sure. That's awesome. I knew as soon as we arrived at Michael C. Fina that we just had to focus on sales. I had put Ryan kind of my second in command and he was in charge of selling the cake. You could choose. You could have all five or you could have one after the other. It's up to you. Um, we're doing something different. We're doing three small cakes. One quarter to two. So we're two hours into the expo at this point, and we haven't had a sale yet. And I'm definitely getting nervous at this point. And, you know, I'm starting to feel like we could be in some trouble. We're from Matchstick Cake Designs. We are a superbly up-and-coming cake design company. That is the key line. Would you like a shot of that? Jim, Bethany, and Sean are going to be heading up the sales force today. Dawn is doing the accounting. Marcella, she was up all night last night, so she's not going to be as big of a component of the sales today. You never see oval. You always see round and square. It looks like a cruise ship. It is unique. It kind of stands out. It kind of reminds me of a boot. Of a boot? <laughs> Now, keep in mind that these are supposed to be sample size plates. Wow, that is one heck of a piece. Thank you. You're very welcome. Is this the, like, B cake that people are placing orders for, or is, can you make slight variations? Obviously, the size can vary, so that, that will alter in some way, shape, or form um, so the height is it? and the shape of it. But yeah, five I mean, flavors the cake is non-negotiable, the ribbon detail, it is as it is. I mean, I, I, I don't know what to say about it. You either love it or you hate it. The hardest part, for sure, is closing the deal. You just stand there feeling like a used car salesman. It's really quite pathetic, um, the stuff that's coming out of my mouth in order to sell this cake. But, um, you know, it's whatever it takes. Oh my gosh, I can't handle this. Great. Where'd you guys meet? Actually, online. Online. Really? Well, I was nervous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I connected with this particular couple. I explained to them that picking a cake was more than just picking a dessert. It was really her cake for her wedding. I want you guys to buy this cake today. I think you really love it. I, I don't want you to I, walk out of here thinking I, I should have done it. We, we have, let's say, 120. How much would that come out to? Okay, so $6 a slice times 120 people is $720. It's a, it's a big step. I, no, it is. Oh, it's been doing right now. One, Are you sure? Of course. What's the matter? Only cake. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm happy. To, you guys want to? Okay. Do you want me? You no, want, it's just want so to take exciting. Something like, gonna... You know, this is like it's real. I sold my first cake, and I really feel proud. It was the first thing they had done for their wedding, and I got to be a part of that, and, and um, it's just, it was great. Way to go, Scott. Good job, good job. I can't believe it. <laughs> I sold you a cake. They sold cake. I was praying and hoping we would have one customer who had a boatload of friends, then we could win the task. 
It's ten dollars per person. Oh, that's good. I know. Yeah, how many? About three hundred. Yeah, three hundred guests. That's a lot. This is like, this is it. No, I'm not a pressure. I'm not trying to pressure you at all. I'm really not. I am so urgent and desperate for the sale. I've had so many people on the line. I am the best salesperson. I'm going nuts about this. People are sitting there whispering and talking about this cake, and I have to sell this cake. It's like having a nervous breakdown every minute. Well, hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. Uh, before we begin, we have an announcement to make. Jim had a baby. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. So, what did she have? Uh, we had a little girl. Yeah. Yes. Mom's okay? Mom's great. Oh, good. So, we're in good shape. Congratulations. Well, I've been tasting the cakes. Um, the chocolate cake with the kind of ecru or um, mocha frosting. Primarius, it's your cake, right? This yes. right. Yes, it is. And uh, tastes good. And matchstick. Two layers of chocolate, one layer of sort of a yellow cake. Both of these taste homemade. Yes. Which is what you really go for for a cake. Can we see the picture? So, so you alternated round with square. Looks pretty. What did they like about it, especially? They like the color. Mm -hmm. Can we see uh, matchstick's cake? Oh, so you had pink, pink ribbons. What shape is that? It looks so... It's an oval shape. Oh, oval. Shape. Set uh, off to the side. Yes, it's not uh, symmetrical. So, Charles, how did Primarius do? Primarius focused on a mass market, and they sold um, five cakes for a total of $3,658. That's very good. Alexis, how did Matchstick do? Well, Matchstick focused on a niche market, and they sold zero cakes for zero dollars. Oh my gosh, that is not good news. I'm just, I'm just astonished. Well, it's a, a clear loss. This is your third loss. The business group is demolishing the so-called creative group. This is really not a good thing. Primarius did a fantastic job. So for your reward, you're going to one of my favorite restaurants in New York City, Jean Georges. Oh, oh wow. wow. What better way to end a wedding task than with New York City's most famous newlyweds, my friends, Donald and Melania Trump. He's chosen a lot of wedding cakes. He certainly has. <laughs> That's gonna be a lot of fun for you. And Matchstick, you lost again. And uh, which means I'm going to be seeing you back here in the conference room, and one of you is going to have to go home. Our reward was to have dessert at Jean Georges' restaurant with Melania and her husband. Um, I can't remember his name, but it didn't matter. I was there to see Melania. This is second to me, Martha, for dinner. <laughs> this is <Okay>. huge. <laughs> wow. Hi. Nice, nice to meet you. How are you? Nice, to meet you. nice seeing you. So how's it all going? Oh, wow. How are you doing? Oh. It's fine. She's great, a isn't good she? Time. <laughs> but she really is. <laughs> this is awesome. Hello. Hi, Donald. It's Martha. How are you? I'm just great. How are you? Well, I'm having a great time, and you have a really attractive group of winners. Oh, I hope they're getting enough to eat. Yeah, I'm worried about them. They're going to starve to death. <laughs> to have Donald and Martha on the phone together talking about us was a completely surreal experience. I'll never forget it as long as I live. OK, get ready, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, son. This is crazy. <laughs> oh, yum. Oh, my god. Oh. Yeah. This is unbelievable. Oh, my God. Would anybody like to work for me? Yes. I'm on a job interview right now, so I gotta hold off. <laughs>
because the product was way too specific. Someone's gotta take the fall for that cake being so specific, guy, and it shouldn't be you. Unless you're the one who told her to make it pink. Just say, look, you cannot sell a pink Hummer unless someone's looking for a pink Hummer. Do whatever you want, but don't be a fool. In this task, I had two professional chefs who were telling me we need an oval-shaped, asymmetrical pink wedding cake. I wasn't going to go against the experts. Here's the deal. The cake is going to be coming up today. The fact that the cake was pink and that couldn't be used by everybody. I'm a chef. I cook Mexican hot cuisine. I have never in my life even been close to wedding cake. I didn't even have one in my wedding. And when professionals, one of them being Sylvia Weinstock, tells you that is a good idea, you automatically think you're going in the right direction. I had so many women who were saying to me, um, pink's, but pink's not my color. I'm sure there are people that didn't adore their cake, pink or not. I mean, it's hard. For it's six it's bucks, totally can't pass hard it up. for me to be subject or objective about it because you guys know I didn't like our cake as much as theirs. Sean wasn't committed to the product that Sean was selling. Sean conveniently seemed to forget that she was the one who said that the cake should be pink. I, I hate this. Don, Marcel, Bethany, all three of you, be ready to go. I could pick any of the three of you. What would be your reason for wanting me to be in there? My reason for wanting you to be in there is because I don't think you're ever going to be able to lead the rest of this team. How could I be the person who's responsible for all the damage that was done that caused us to lose? What the hell did I even do to help contribute to the loss? Don't keep dragging me into the conference room because you don't like me and you don't want to listen to me and I'm annoying to you. With the exception of Sean, everyone was positive that we would win. I'm trying to decide, is it the sales team? Or is it the cake? Or is it some combination of the two? At the end of the day, though, we didn't sell any cakes. We're back. Matchstick, you can't sell something that isn't more universally acceptable, a cake that was all set to one side. What was the deal with the design? I wanted to think outside the box. And yet, did you do your research in, in the loft? We had these magazines the all over the place. I was looking through our years of uh, weddings magazines. We only did one asymmetrical cake. Did you see that one? Yes. Yeah. Well, yes. they're fun. They're, they're so fun. fun. They're different. But they do not limit the audience. You can dream over things like this. This is harder. There may be one person who dreams of an off-center cake. You know what Sylvia Weinstock told us? She said that at elegant weddings, no one wants to serve cupcakes where you have to futz with the paper on the outside. Oh, but you don't have to have paper. Yeah. So you don't have to put paper on the outside of it. No. Really? No. no. So no. can it just come as is, little cakes? Oh, yes. Oh, completely glazed, okay. completely covered. Just I little why she mini would say that. Wedding then. cakes. Okay, Sylvia Weinstock uh, <laughs> is, is a, she's a she's a real character. Yes. I think she makes some of the most beautiful cakes I have ever seen. But I have probably sold more cakes than Sylvia Weinstock. We should have been calling you for advice, really, not <laughs> calling Sylvia. No, no, no. She knows she is very professional, and her stuff is utterly gorgeous. However, she targets a very specific audience. I want to know who was in charge of sales. Yeah. Who was in charge of sales? Actually, that's what I think is so discouraging. The amount of work that Bethany, Jim, and I put into sales is completely disproportionate to this outcome. The sales pitch goes like this. Have you thought about colors for your, for your wedding? Yes, we have. Oh, what are they? Blue. Uh, OK, next. Jim, I'd consider changing that sales pitch yeah. on the next go around. Well, it would have been great if you could, could have convinced the bride who was using blue that pink cake would have been the perfect well, thing. Actually, I think we had, with all due respect, I think we had plenty of salespeople. But I mean, honestly, I think there's only so much you can do, frankly, to sell a burka to a swimsuit model. You always seem to have very good verbal explanations why you failed. But unfortunately, that's not what we're here for. We're here to win. Sean. I know you're going to say it, aren't you? Well, you said to me. I knew it. I we're going to win this. And if <laughs> I don't, we don't win this. I should be the one to go oh, home. Oh, Charles, how I knew this was going to haunt me. Well, first of all. Why did you say that? Well, I'll tell you why. Because in my business, they say fake it till you make it. 
And, uh, you know, admittedly, that was a lot of puffed up confidence because we and had not never, in my business. We, well, I'm talking in television news and some people could say that was a lot of bravado, but that's how I felt. I absolutely felt that we were going to win. I infused that comment with a little bit of humor, too. And now I respectfully retract it. Well, David, you're going to have to choose two people to come back to the conference room and one is going to go home. So who do you choose? Marcel and Dawn. Bethany, Sean, Jim, go back to the loft. The three of you, Marcella and David and Dawn, I want to see you back in the conference room. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. You know, something's not quite right here. This is not about baking the cake. This is about sales. If anything, Bethany, Jim, and Sean should be in the conference room. They didn't sell a cake. They didn't sell a cake. I want to call them back. This is not right. I just don't feel good about this at all. Julia, would you call the loft and have Matchstick, Sean and Jim and Bethany, come back down, and in the meantime, send in Dawn and David and Marcella. Okay, I'll take care of it. Okay, thanks. I feel much better about doing that. You can go in right now. This is Julia from Martha's office. Who's this? This is Sean. Martha has requested that you and Bethany and Jim return to the conference room. Okay, thank you. Martha's requesting that we all return to the conference room. Okay. There must be some kind of debate going on. I think that this really was a sales problem, not a baker problem. It was the sales force didn't perform. And so I've called the other three back again. Okay. okay? You can go right into the conference room. Okay. Upon further reflection, Charles, Alexis, and myself have decided that this was really not a baker's problem. It was not Dawn's problem. This was a basic market research problem. And we didn't sell any cakes. This was not a bad cake. For whatever reason, I think you were trying to sell a Sylvia Weinstock cake and not market to a mass audience. David, I think you're young, inexperienced in this regard. But I think that Dawn, <laughs> I don't think she's proven herself either way yet, okay? Okay. And Bethany and Jim, I am not happy with the job that either one of you did. I think that not being able to sell one cake shows a complete lack of sales ability. But for me, there was another thing that happened tonight that really bothered me. And it was, it was you, Sean. You said, well, you've said two things that really had bothered me. Tonight, you said, fake it till you make it. And in my business, there's just no faking it. I mean, if we've tried, we couldn't fake it. We wouldn't think of faking it. Forgive me, it's simply a TV analogy when you're on TV and you, you, ha you haven't learned your craft yet. I've been on TV for 12 years. I've never said fake it till you make it. And the second thing that you said, Sean, was that if the team didn't win the task, that you would go home. Well, remember, this is a job interview. And you wouldn't say that to a potential employer. You just wouldn't say, because you're not here to lose, you're here to win. And I think in business, you should think before you speak and don't say things that then you're really willing to retract so easily. 
and being part of this awful sales team is the icing on the cake. I wish you well. Thank you. But I have to say goodbye. Understood. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Good night. It seems to me that she wasn't really invested in being your apprentice. No, I don't think so either. I think she's, she is, uh, has hopes of being a television personality of some sort. I think either she's young, inexperienced, or just doesn't get what even being a newscaster means. Okay, this is a letter to Sean. Dear Sean, tonight I know it was difficult for you. You have a career in television. You can develop your talent in the medium very well. You look good, you speak well, and you certainly are talkative. The culture at MSLO is very complex, and I want to stress again that what we do here has to be thorough through and through, beautiful from the inside out, just like the wedding cake. You, as you build your career, will find this business lesson to be valid and true. Best of luck, Martha Stewart.